Um, Will Steel Pandey. So I'll give you a brief address on what I see as the globalization of PAN. And unfortunately, I always stir up trouble. I try and I fail to not do so. So forgive me. I just want to make a little correction, or rather just shift the emphasis a bit. The first thing is the fact of PAN being global, there are nearly 2,000 steel bands in the US. They are all over the world. I mean, there's a remarkable video of the Royal Guard of Oman playing in a, a, a city in Australia. And it's, um, they're all in their Muslim official outfits, swaying and playing the hammer. And that spread of pan is remarkable because if we look at music today, popular music, it has become exclusively vocal music. When was the last time you heard a piece of instrumental music on the top 500? And it's tended to be simpler and simpler. And yet we are producing very complex instrumental music and swimming against the current and still making headway. So that is remarkable. And this is where I want to just um, offer a tiny little corrective to some of the points that are raised often. Because we talk about the steel pan. You know, when we get formal, we speak of the steel pan and we have a nice accent and so on. You know, like sometimes Mr. Mitchell will speak of the mass. And that's great because the pan, the, the steel pan is, is a marvel. But what spread is not the steel pan. That's just an aspect and not necessarily the most important aspect. The most important aspect of what spread is pan. And there's a big difference. If I say you enter pan, you may not have ever touched one, ever played one. It's like the difference between a football, which is a spherical leather inflatable thing, and football. Football is Gally Cummins and World Cup and FIFA and Pele, and it's a culture and it's a history, and it's football hooliganism in Britain and it's teams and it's Manchester United and it's Barcelona. That's football. What spread is pan. That is, that is what we gave the world, that brilliant thing. And it's a way of making music. That's one of the things that draw people to it. It's the sound, it's the ensemble we call a steel band, it's the culture. It's not just the men who make the steel pan. We have Smooth Edwards, who's one of the great, perhaps one of the greatest contributors to pan. And I don't know if he ever tuned a steel pan, but he is part of that amazing organization known as Trinidad All Stars. When you think of steel bands, you go into a steel band, any of the large steel bands, and we all know them, you know, All Stars, Desperados, Renegades, Renegades, Phase Two, and you'll see people from all over the world and you will go in there and they're now starting to learn their tune. And they're playing the same six bars over and over and over. And it never strikes you that every other performing artist in the world performs privately and secretly. The actors, the dancers, the musicians, and when they get it together, they come out in public and maybe they charge you money. In Trinidad, we invite you in when we are learning. We're learning the tune and we're playing it and smooth as they are buffing people. And that's unique. And you will see in face, you see some women from Japan who can't speak English. And you'll see from Leicester and you'll see from Brooklyn and you'll see, you'll see Hindus, Muslims, Christians, Orishas. You'll see white, black, Chinese. You'll see an old man from Lavante who is 75 years old and he there since the band start. And you'll see a little boy from Goodwood Park who have to stand up on a street drink case because he's too small. And what you'll see is an organization that has transcended everything that keeps us humans apart. It's class, it's race, it's language, it's education, it's religion, it's nationality. 
all of that. Because you know they're there? Because they're good enough to be there. That's why they did that. That's the only reason they're there. And that is a remarkable achievement. And it's that culture which spread, not just the instrument, it's pan which spread all over the world. When you look at how pan spread, it didn't spread like all of the beautiful music African Americans have created in, in, in the new world. Not like the reggae and the salsa and the samba and the rock and roll and the jazz and the blues and the dance hall and the hip hop. It didn't spread like that. The people hear it, you hear it on the radio and you like it and you buy a record, you buy a CD or you download. It spread by little bands being started all over. As I said, 2000 in the US, so many in Japan, a few in Australia, one in Oman, several in Nigeria, a lot of them in Britain, several in France. It spread like that. It, didn't, it spread by people making music, not consuming music, not just buy it and listen. And why, how did it manage to do that? And this is the genius of the steel pan. It is the easiest instrument to learn. If you've never played music, smooth could take you. And before you go home this evening, you could play a tune. And what that does, it gives people the pleasure of playing music. But it's not just playing music as an individual, it's part of an ensemble. And it's the pleasure of playing music with a group of people who become your friends because you're playing music with them. And that's not to be discounted. If you know, if you're in a steel band, you are in the most gated community. A friend of mine who arranged for cordets was telling me a story recently, yesterday. They were practicing one night. And they see a fellow running down the road and three men chasing him with cutlass. And he run inside the pan yard and they stopped outside. Because that is sacred area. And that is part of pan. That is not just a part of an instrument. That is part of that beautiful thing we call pan. It's easy to play. Um, now, I also want to address a thing that is very often raised in Trinidad. We talk about the teeth in the teeth in pan, right? I mean, generally, when people say that, I'd say, you know, kind of joking. They will give them back their saxophone, give them back the piano, give them back the guitar, and let me keep it pan. And let nobody talk to anybody. But no musician will agree with you. But I'm just being facetious because there, there is a bigger point. Let it spread. Let it spread all over the world. And let us make sure we are the Mecca. And we are the Mecca now. All the pan, panis of all ages all over the world would love if they can afford to come to Trinidad. They, that is their dream. But it will not necessarily remain so. I could give you a sort of more solitary example. There's a guy called Heinrich Stenweg which, whose name you would not have heard, but he was a Jewish guy living in Germany who made pianos. And he was getting, being a Jewish guy in Germany in the 19th century, obviously suffering because of that. And he got fed up and he went to America, where he changed his name to Henry, his first name, and his second name to Steinway. Now that is the piano, the concert piano, this Steinway piano. We let Ellie Manette leave us and set up shop in West Virginia, University of West Virginia. We left Cliff Alexis, set up shop in Northern Illinois, which has become the place you go and learn pan. That is crazy. That is dereliction of duty. So what I'm saying is that, don't worry about the teeth in it. Just don't give it away. Let us become the Mecca, just as Saudi Arabia is the Mecca for every Muslim in the world. Everyone wants to do Hajj if you're a Muslim. Now, one of the things that has marked the, the, the experience of playing in a pan, of being in a steel band, because you don't have to play. If you are painting pans, if you're loading them on the truck, the vagrant in phase two who is feed the stray dog is part of the band. The, you know, as they were, as in, in Renegades, there's a short raster. All of these are part of the organization known as a steel band, because as I said, it is the most all-embracing institution, I would suggest, in the world. <laughs> and that's something the world needs to do. Um, and we are still the home. We need to 
continue innovating because in this super competitive world, if, if you cease innovating, you're lost. We need to develop our pedagogy. Every instrument develops its own pedagogy. If you're learning piano, there's a way you learn it. If you're learning guitar, there's a way you learn it. There's some things you will not learn in a guitar if you're a beginner, if you can't bar a chord. Take a year to learn that. They won't start you on an F. On a piano, you'll start on a C, because that's all the white. We have not developed a proper pedagogy for pan yet. We have not. We have developed elements of it in the steel bands. You know what I call each one teach one? That is a crucial. You go in a pan yard and the fellow knows you look and he will show you. That is an aspect of our pedagogy that we develop. That is beautiful. But there are other things we still need to develop. Um, all of it makes pan, the ensemble, the music, the movement, the instrument, the supporters, everything. That is what we created. That is what spread globally. And let us keep it. Let us cherish it. I just want to read um, something from my recent book, which emphasizes this point of um, what we created and what it is part of, because I always come back to the fact that it is a part of that beautiful, beautiful cultural um, renaissance that was created in the Americas from the, in the 20th century, go on. You know, we all know about the Renaissance. Everybody here, here about Michelangelo and Leonardo and Mona Lisa, everybody here, we all know that. And what we don't realize is that we have lived through the greatest renaissance of culture in human history in the form of popular music. We have. When you think of all of the musicians, and we just know a fraction, all these TV wonders and the Sparrows and the Kitcheners and the Marlies and the James Browns, all of these, I mean, vast numbers of them. And we don't know all because we don't know all the ones from Colombia and all the tango artists. And we created it. We the New World people. We are the Creole people. We created it. We created it out of the fire. In the, the fires of slavery, the fires of colonialism, the fires of segregation. That's what it was created out of. And we don't recognize the beauty. We don't have the confidence in ourselves. But Pan is a central part of that. In some ways, it is the most radical because it's a music but it's also a way of making music, and it's also an instrument, and it's also a movement, and it's also an organization. So just let me read this one paragraph uh, from the chapter of my book. Uh, my book is The Illustrated Story of Pan. And it says, the operative principle underlying the music Africans brought to the new world is that it must help people to live. This is a functional approach to music. Music is made to give people strength when they are weak. It must lift their spirits when they are down. With music, people can celebrate the joys of life, and in these is itself one of life's greatest pleasures. Yet it must also connect people with their ancestors in the land of the dead and with the gods in the heavens above. Long live the Silvan movement. Well, what can one say at this stage, except that was mind-blowing. That was fantastic.